Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Welcome to Crypto Hash Review, where we educate and disseminate information about Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies from a Muslim perspective. Now, today we want to discuss, give analogies, how to understand the blockchain technology. What is blockchain? Now, there's a few things to be said about blockchain. Uh, and blockchain as a technology, as a concept, is an amazing thing. It's kind of obvious in hindsight, but it's actually an amazing thing. And from the amazing things about blockchain technology is its similarities between the similarities with the Islamic heritage and Islamic history. Because the Islamic history, the Islamic texts were recorded kind of like a blockchain in the sense that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa when he said and did things, that's what he said and did. And when the companions saw it, they understood it and memorized it and learned it. And heard what he said and memorized it and learned it. But how did we come to know this information? How did we come to get this information to us? It happened via succession of transmission. So every hadith, even the Quran, there is a chain of connected individuals that transmitted the information to us. These tra this chain, you could say, is a historical record. It's a historical record of how that information got from one place to the other. And in some ways, that is how Bitcoin works and functions. Bitcoin or blockchain technology is a means of recording the history of how money moves from one person to the other or from one address to the other. So as soon as a Bitcoin comes into existence, it's in a particular address, i.e. the address of the miner who, who earned that Bitcoin. But if he wants to spend it, he has to transmit it to someone else. So he sends out a letter informing the miners, I've made a transaction and I've signed it, and the other miners will take it, verify it, add it to their letters, put it into their little block, their little letter, and they'll hand it to the nodes, and the Hufad, and they would take this, verify it, and add it to their record. And at that particular time and date, that was when his Bitcoin moved from here to here. And then when that person wished to spend his Bitcoin or send it to someone else, he will send a message out to the miners. They will take this message, verify it, add it to other transactions, make it a little block, hand it over to the nodes, Nodes will verify that this is what they've done is correct. All the work that they've all the work that they've done is correct, and they'll add it to their history. And now you've now got a record of that. The money started from the miner to this person, now to this person, and that's with every Bitcoin. Every Bitcoin has a traceable history back to where it came from. So blockchain is like a continuous isnad, a continuous chain of narration of events on this day at this time. These coins move from here to here. And that's essentially what blockchain, blockchain technology is. It's literally a implementation of the Isnad technology, you could say, the Isnad idea, into a monetary form. Whereby from that now we can verify the path of every single coin inside the, big, inside the Bitcoin uh, network. Now, the difference, the, the difference come apart whereby the verification comes about because in Islam, we verify each chain by an array of different things, which is not the scope in this video, but for example, the, the reliability of the individuals who memorize it, whether, the, whether this person even met the other person, what other chains have said, and so on. There's a, there's a process involved to verify the validity of every individual um, piece of information, whereas Bitcoin being... Uh, a program essentially being information and being based on mathematics everything can be verified mathematically so let me give you an example of verification imagine I sent a letter to the miner and I said I bear witness that 1 plus 1 equals 2 so a miner can take that information and say he says 1 plus 1 equals 2 let me check that myself 1 plus 1 equals 2 so I've now verified mathematically that what this person's statement here is true by what I have, I can do myself. I can replicate that information and I can do it myself. So then the miner will say, okay, this guy says one plus one equals two. And I think two plus three equals five. And he signs that himself and in his block. Then when he gives that to the nodes, they say, well, he says in his node, in his block, 
that 1 plus 1 equals 2 and 2 plus 3 equals 5, I can verify that that is actually true. So if you can make a, a path whereby money moves from address to address and make that path verifiable by mathematics, that makes that level of verification extremely secure. That's essentially where Bitcoin's blockchain technology differs from the Islamic Isnad. But one could argue that that's just an implementation of the reality, as in because Bitcoin is a mathematically based system, verification is mathematically based. Whereas the Hadith is an oral tradition. It's something based on information, knowledge, understanding, and based on individuals who carry that information. So therefore, the method of verification is in line with that reality, that there's people involved, there's information involved, and that has a different um, scope of verification. But both systems have the same fundamentals. It is a continuational historical record of what happens, how information got from one place to the other, and they each have their own way of verifying the validity of that information. We hope you find that analogy useful. We hope you find this video useful itself. Please like and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to give us a chat, you can give us a call. Our details are on our website. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.